In the previous movie, I mentioned how a graph inside of Illustrator is really a special kind of a group. It's a special object that Illustrator creates for you based on the data that you provide. So I wanted to take a moment to kind of break apart really what goes together and actually makes up a graph object inside of Illustrator. It's actually a series of groups, but each group has a very specific function. And when we start diving into the details about how to control what does go into a graph and how to modify some of its settings, it's important to know the terminology about what these different parts are called. Now in this example here, I'm dealing with a file called anatomy.ai. And as an example, I'm using a column chart. But for the most part, no matter what style of chart that you decide to use, they'll all be made up of multiple components that are similar to what you see here. Each of the separate gray areas that you see are actually different groups that Illustrator creates. There's an area here in the center which is actually the chart. Now, if I create a line chart or a bar chart or a stacked bar chart, that will all get drawn within this area. Now, if you remember back in the previous movie, when I clicked once with my cursor on the artboard using the graph tool, a dialog box appeared asking me for the width and the height values. What exactly do those numbers represent? The answer is, it represents the bounding area for the chart part of the graph. So for example, if I were to type in a width of six inches and a height of four inches, then the bounding area for the chart part of my graphic will be four by six. All the other areas, the legend, the legend values, the category axis, and the value axis, those all actually get drawn or added outside of that area. It's also important to realize that the actual bounding part of my chart is tied to the value axis. We'll get a better understanding of this in the next chapter, but I just want to let you know that it is possible for the values within your chart to sometimes extend beyond the bounds of the actual area where you define your chart. Likewise, I may have a line chart that may dip below, or if I have some negative values here on these bars, they may actually come outside the bounding area towards the bottom of this chart area. So it's important to have a good understanding about what this area of the chart represents. Now, the data that I provide to Illustrator allows Illustrator to create this chart, and that data is made up of values and categories. The values are charted here, and the categories are charted here, although as you'll see later on, you can always swap the two. But the value axis is made up of a combination of these tick marks and also the values themselves. However, for the category axis, you'll find that the tick marks and the values appear in two separate groups. If we look towards the right here, I have the legend, and that's basically solid boxes that represent what each of the colors or lines in this chart represent. And there's an additional group here that identifies them by actual labels. The reason why it's important to understand the terminology or at least understand what these different groups are is because later on when we start messing with the different settings inside of a chart, we'll see that we have the ability to, for example, have the legend display across the top of a graph instead of along the side of it. Or I have the ability for the value axis to appear both on the left side and also the right side of a chart. If I understand what these things mean, for example, what legend means or what value axis means, I'll have a better time understanding those settings when I'm working with them inside of the graph dialog boxes. Remember that the graph functions don't actually have any preview settings, so it's not as easy to experiment with these settings. You kind of have to know what they are when walking into this feature. So at this point, we understand how graphs work, and we also have a better understanding about what makes up a graph inside of Illustrator. But we're missing one more part, which is probably the most important part, the data itself. Is there anything special that you have to do in order to work with data inside of Illustrator? Do I have to format it in some way? How can I control these various settings within the graph using my data? These are all questions that we're going to answer in the next movie.